Good morning and welcome to First Church. We're glad that you are joining us in person and those that are joining us online. If you'd fill out your connection card that you find in your bulletin and those that can find it virtually on the web, please do that so that we might know your pastoral needs and how you might be able to volunteer um, as we go through this time of Lent. Our Lenten video challenges are up every day except for Sundays because Sundays are not considered part of Lent. So we have our 40 days and um, tune into those. It's nice to see all the ages of people that are in that and being able to share and it's a great way to be challenged to live out Lent. On Wednesday night this week, we go to our, our uh, Bible studies and we're inviting you to bring a brown bag and just to share fellowship. Bring your own supper and sit down with us as we eat before our Bible studies and it's a, a good time to be able to talk and to fellowship. We are going to have a drive-through Easter celebration. Um, and we need volunteers. It'll be very similar to how we did the drive through for Christmas, and we'll have stations laid up so that as people come through, they can, they'll get a bag of things, and some of it will be candy, and we'll need candy donated. We need all of those things donated so that we can have that. And as they come through, they get the Easter message, um, as well as some candy and some celebration and an invitation to come join us on Easter Sunday. So please come and help. Child of God is having a, a book fair today. So if you go upstairs in the gathering space, there are books there that you might be able to buy for your children, grandchildren, friends, family. Um, so go check it out and see what you can do. Let us continue to worship God this morning with standing and singing together our opening hymn.
may be seated. And all of God's people said, Amen. 
I am so thankful that I can, um, Kayla puts it up on the screen so I can also see you all because I'm underneath. So thank you. Beautiful music. Thank you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the warmth that your love that is there to sustain us in the coldest of days. And there is to draw us near when we feel that we are lost and floating away from the winds of, of sins and the winds of just the regular earth and all the troubles that seem to go. But you are there to call us to a home that is warm, to a place that we are forgiven, to a place where there's grace and mercy, and we thank you. Lord, we come confessing that we have not always followed the path that you have laid before us, and we ask, Lord, that you will hear our prayer of confession and forgive our sins. Lord, we thank you that the good news is that while we were yet sinners, you died for us, and that shows your love for us. Lord, we come today lifting up all of those in our world that are facing so many hard things. We, we have the war in the Ukraine and the churches that are there and trying to stay open so that people might be able to come in and find refuge and have a place where they can pray. Lord, we don't always understand why there is so much hatred in the world, but we ask that your peace may come, the peace that passes all understanding. And we pray for those, Lord, that are, are in the midst the ones that are being persecuted and the ones, Lord, that are in the midst not really knowing what's going on either. And so, Lord, may they, may they feel a sense of peace and may you give them a, an understanding that they are loved and not alone. Lord, we come lifting up those that need your healing power those that need it physically, emotionally, spiritually. Lord, you are the great healer of all. And so we ask that you will place your hands upon them, that they will feel your power and strength. We lift up those, Lord, who have lost loved ones, that in their sorrow you might give them comfort. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us your son, Jesus, who willingly is going to the cross, has gone to the cross, who continues to be there and, and did not let death hold him, but came alive for us to have a life everlasting. And Lord, we thank you that you have taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and deliver our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, but deliver temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just a quick reminder before we hear our choir anthem, that at noon each day we're asking those who can pray for the Ukraine to take five minutes at noon and just say a five-minute prayer to lift up for world peace and for our leaders.
Our scripture is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yes, he, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this morning is drawn to the cross with grace, but in that I want you to remember what grace is. The definition is unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification, a virtue coming from God, a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. I would like to take that and just make it is, it's a gift, a free gift of forgiveness. I think that one's easier to understand than Merriam-Webster's dictionary definition, but it's a free gift of forgiveness. And we come to this time that Jesus, again, was willing to walk to the cross, willing to be there and die for our sins so that we might have life and have it abundantly. Well, I want to start with that and, and go to our first point that we have a high priest. We have a high priest. In Israel, the high priest was responsible for administering the sacrificial system that God had established for various purposes, the atonement of sins being the most important. Only the high priest was allowed into the Holy of Holies, the dwelling place of God. And then on the Day of Atonement, he presided over the Sanhedrin, the highest authority over all matters in Israel, both religious and civic. Jesus... Jesus assumed the role of high priest, our intermediary with God, and the ultimate gift of salvation comes from God. The author of this area notes, the one who passed through the heavens, he is thus superior to the earthly high priest. Those access to God was limited, but they only were in the Holy of Holies one day of year. But Jesus has access to God each and every day. Each and all the time. God and Jesus are together. And then it says, let us hold tight to our confession. Being able to, to confess our sins knows and allows us to be the ones who receive the grace. Until we are able to confess that we are in need of a Savior, we can go on, not thinking we need help. Do you know how hard it is for people, I think it's a, an American piece, that people asking for help? I can do it on my own. You know, we've heard, pull up your just pull up your boots by the straps and let's go. Get over it. And we tell people that all the time. But what it's telling us that we need to be able to ask for help from the one who gives the ultimate gift of help, Lord Jesus. He is there to help us, to forgive us, to show us the direction and it's okay to ask for help. Many of you are teachers, and I know that you have told your students, please ask for help if you need it. Please ask a question. 
There's no such thing as a dumb question. Well, I think I taught my daughters and myself a little bit too much that because one teacher called me up one year and said, your daughter asks way too many questions. I said, but are they good questions? Well, usually, but I can't get my directions out because she's always asking a question. But I'm going to tell you, it's okay to ask questions, to ask for help, for God is always there and present. We have a high priest who is touched by our infirmities, who is touched by our emotions, who can sympathize with our weakness, who is there from birth to death, who experiences our hunger and our thirst, knows about the primitive world and the dusty roads and the crosses. He knows all of those things that we go through. He knows those things and can answer our questions. He knows those things and can hear our cries. And he is the one that is there to say, I love you. You are mine. And then, in that whole process, it says, let us therefore draw near with boldness to the throne of grace. Don't be afraid. Go forward with boldness to the throne of grace. Draw near. Sometimes we think of ourselves as being those that don't have a place or, or position. But the word tells us that we are God's children here and now. And what we shall be will be revealed to us. And so we go and have that God says, come to me. All you are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Come with boldness. Don't be shy. Don't hide your face. Don't pretend you don't see him. For he is there. He says, come with boldness. There was a um, group of us a few years ago that did a ministry called Holy Boldness. We were willing to be bold because of our faith and to try things that nobody had ever tried before and say, let's go, let's do it, even though it had never been done before or we had never done it that way before. Have you ever heard that? Those are known as the last seven words of the church. We've never done it that way before. But we are called to try, to go, to ask, to seek. Because we have a God who loves us. A God is there. Now, when we go to the throne, like we were going go to the throne of, uh, go, th go to the throne at Great Britain with a king or a queen, there are cer certain procedures that we have to do. First, we, we need to use the proper wording to accept an invitation. You just don't go on your own. You have to be invited. And it's a fancy invitation. And you have to have just the right words to say, yes, I'm accepting that. Now, women, women would wear white gloves even now and hats, of course hats, and men would wear morning dress or uniforms with decorations, of course. You have to be properly dressed. And in the presence of the queen, women would curtsy. Do you all still remember how to curtsy? I'm not sure my knee can take me down far enough to curtsy. And, um, and men would have to bow. The queen would be addressed as her majesty. The king, the queen would take initiative with regard to the conversation. We would not be expected to steer the conversation. No personal questions, of course. No questions about state policy. And that's only the beginning of all the rules that you have to file, follow if you are going in front of an earthly king or queen. But when we go to our Lord, 
our Heavenly Father, when we go to him with his son, Christ Jesus, that is right there with him, we are children and we are allowed to ask questions. We are allowed to come as we are. We are allowed to be there as his own. We don't have to, to respond with a fancy word. We can respond with just our hearts. And the invitation is always opened. It's, I am here always. Come unto me. The invitation is that Jesus is standing at our, the, heart, the door of our hearts and knocking. And we are the ones that just have to let him in. We are children adopted into God's family, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Do you know the rest of that passage? If, in fact, we are willing to suffer with him so that we also might be glorified with him. We can approach the throne of grace, not just at our death, but any time that we come to the Lord in prayer. We approach the throne of grace. We approach it. And he is there. And he is saying, come unto me. And the last part, the third part that I want you to hear is that we have mercy and we find grace. For our help in time of need. Mercy and grace imply that we have not earned God's favor. Instead, God has bestowed his favor on us freely. It's a gift, a free gift, no strings attached. It's there. All we have to do is say yes, take the gift, unwrap it, and make it ours. I wanted to find what the difference was between mercy and grace. And the mercy definition goes something like that, like this compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is in with one's power to punish or to harm. It's mercy. Mercy. Mercy extend, is God's way of extending his grace to us and saying, you are mine, I love you, I forgive you. And his grace says, go as those who are forgiven. Go. Can you think of a time when you know that you were forgiven? Maybe it was by a parent. Maybe it was by a friend. And you were able to pick up and go on. To remember that time when you were able to wipe the slate clean and start again. Maybe it was even with your own spouse that you were able to do that. To wipe the slate clean and start again. It's a time where we can find that we are truly forgiven and we can go on. If humans can do such a thing, just think of the gift of forgiveness that God can give us through his son, Jesus. When I was a young adult, there was a song that we would sing many times at Emmaus, many times just at gathering. And it's, our God is an awesome God. We had motions to it as well. And one of the verses says, mercy and grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God has planned through history the creation of the world. He has planned and given us the gift of salvation through his only son. He has given us the chance of having new life, that we can approach the throne of mercy and have mercy and grace and be forgiven and go in a new direction, a new way, a new promise. And we don't have to curtsy and we don't have to bow. But what we do need to do is to give our hearts to him fully, to confess that we can't do it on our own. And during this 40 days of Lent, I'm asking that you take a chance to look inside your hearts and see how you might give it totally and freely to him. 
What are the areas that you're holding back and forgetting to ask for forgiveness? Or what are the areas that you ask for forgiveness and then you take it right back? Sometimes one of the things that I do is like I hold on to things. You know those hurts? Those places in your heart? And, and um, I've been told that I have a memory that can remember every wrong that could ever happen. Um, sometimes if Jeff and I are having a discussion, he will look at me and I'll bring up the subject and he'll say, that was 30 years ago, can you let it go? Sorry, honey. But not only do I do it with him, but I have it still in my mind that there are others that have hurt me. And I've even found myself most recently of, Lord, can you, can you please help me let go of those things that I have no control of? Help me forgive those that have hurt me. Help me to go on and not to hold a grudge. Help me to go forward with your gift of forgiveness. Help me to give grace as you have given me grace. Help me to go forward as someone who is alive and not one who is being held by my anger or by my hurt or by my pain. For you have bore that all for me. Let me go forward with mercy and grace. Mercy and grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten. That although we are here as humans and it's hard for us to imagine. But our God, our God is an awesome God. Who loves us, cares for us, and forgives us. and gives us that great gift of grace that is wrapped and ready for us to unwrap and take and make ours. Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, we come thanking you for your gift of mercy and grace. We thank you that you are always approachable. We thank you that you are there knocking on our hearts and asking us to open them fully to you. And we know, Lord, that you give us the gift of forgiveness. And may we learn to forgive others as you have forgiven us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our closing hymn.
in your bulletins through this six weeks of Lent, we are putting in flyers that say, Drawn to the Cross. And today's ends with, On the cross, Jesus graces us with the gifts of forgiveness and life that we do not deserve. Our journey through Lent focuses on these glorious blessings from God. May you focus on your blessings. May you go in his understanding that he loves you. May you know that the gift of grace is freely yours. You just have to take it. Take it and go in his name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> 